Hello everyone and welcome back to the sixth part of the Netcode for Game Object tutorial series. If you're new to the channel, I'm currently working through the entire suite of multiplayer tools made by Unity, starting with Netcode for Game Objects. I do educational videos on all things Unity and game development, and if that sounds interesting to you, then please consider subscribing. We have a Discord as well, and for those who have gotten a lot of value out of my videos and would like to support me further, there's also a Patreon link in the description as well. Now in today's video, we're going to cover another commenter's requested topic, which is both client prediction as well as fixing the issue of movement speeds being different when you're on a host versus when you're the client. As this is a rather large and complex task, I'm going to tackle the theory side of this first, and then we'll get into the implementation. So grab yourself a coffee and settle in. Client prediction is a complex topic, so I'd recommend not skipping through the theory for this one uh, if it's your first time taking a look at it. Plus, it also helps my retention, so uh, give it a go. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at replacing the network transform created in Unity. We're also going to take a brief overview of ping and how that's going to impact us and why that's important when we're working with this. We're going to take a look at time.delta time versus a tick.delta time and the creation of that tick. Then we're going to take a look at the actual client side prediction and how it works. And in the next video, we'll cover reconciliation. So this is what happens when the server and the client are not aligned on their ticks, and we need to do some form of reconciliation to bring it back into line. In doing that, we're going to be using the server side player movement script. That's one that we've created in a previous tutorial. We'll be doing some pretty heavy additions to this one, and we're also going to create a state handler. As I said before, please don't worry if you don't understand this at first, it is pretty complicated, but go through this, go through the code, maybe come back to this and look at it again, and hopefully it'll make a lot more sense. So what is ping? Well, most people play games nowadays, so it's pretty common, but ping is a method used to get a round trip time or RTT from your machine to an endpoint. If I took an example of 300 ping, we could say that I have my computer, the internet, and the place I'm trying to reach. Let's say I'm in Australia and the destination I'm trying to reach is in America, and pretty commonly, when I send off a request, I might see 125 ms as the time it takes to reach that destination. It will then return a response to me, which might take another 125 ms, and your total round trip is 300, which makes it a 300 ping or 0.3 second delay. Now, ping is very important when it comes to client prediction because it wouldn't be needed if everyone had a zero ping, which is obviously never possible because you always need to go via the internet to reach some form of destination. And the thing that you want to avoid is when a person might, let's say, press shoot or press W to walk forwards, have a 0.3 second delay before the character takes action on that. That would feel very clunky and just give a very bad overall experience. So we'll be using client prediction to tackle that. But before we get onto that, let's talk about time.delta time versus a tick. So time.delta time measures the elapsed time between two consecutive frames. And that's important from a networking perspective because let's take an example of a good computer and a bad computer. And both of them are measured over one second. On a good computer, let's say that my processing power is a lot faster than on my bad computer. And because of that, I'm able to process more frames within that period of time. So that one second, this computer is able to get 10 frames out. Whereas on the bad computer, I'm only able to get five frames out. Now, when you're playing a single player game, this doesn't make a difference because there's no need for a good computer and a bad computer to be compared. You just play within the one ecosystem and everything works fine. And when you introduce the server into that situation, you run into a problem where the good computer is potentially able to see more into the future than the bad computer can because it takes a longer time to update. And to give a real world example of how this could be bad, let's say you're playing an FPS game and you're on a good computer and you walk around a corner, you're able to see the player and potentially even shoot them before the bad computer even sees that you've walked around the corner. So that would give a really terrible experience and obviously multiplayer games just wouldn't generally work like that. So to combat this, we introduce a tick controlled time. And effectively what this does is it controls the update that every computer connected to the game sees. So even though the good computer is capable of processing two frames within that time, it's only going to receive one update. By doing this, we can see that the good computer and the bad computer both receive the same update at the same time. So why is this important? Well, for starters, it ensures that everyone receives the same network state. That way you can be sure that every player in the game is seeing the same thing at the same time. But it's also necessary for you to do server-side validation as well as simulation of other players. If, for example, I was trying to validate action from a server and one player is three frames ahead of the other player, I would not be able to validate a one-to-one -one likeness across the whole game. And finally, it's good for optimizing bandwidth. Because you're limiting the amount of ticks that you're sending, the good computer is capable of processing more but receiving less, it reduces the amount of information that needs to be packaged up and sent. 
In a previous video, we looked at the a scenario around ownership and we used an RPC to move. Now in this scenario, we actually had an assumption of a zero MS lag. So we were getting instant responses, which isn't really true, but it was good to show the example of what we were trying to prove. Now in this scenario, you could see the player wanted to move forward, the server verified he moved, wanted to move forward, and then the player was able to move forward. Now let's take a look at how client prediction would handle this scenario. We're gonna say that the player has 300 ping, we're gonna operate using ticks and we're gonna use client prediction. Now, in this scenario, what will happen is we still have our player A, we've got rid of our player B because it's not relevant for this, and we have our server as well. Player A can say that it would like to take a step forward, but at the same time it says it's going to, it's actually able to locally move on the client. Now that will move forward while sending the request, and then there's gonna be a, a 0.15 second delay while it's sending and then receiving to say, sure, move forward. It's gonna send that response back to the client. And then the client is eventually gonna say, hey, I'm here now at 121, at which point the server confirms, yes, the player's at 121. And now the main difference here is that the client has been able to move immediately and then been confirmed by the server. The difference in the past was that the client had to wait until the server told it it could move and then move it to the new location. And what happens when you have a 300 ms delay is that the player would, let's say, left click to shoot and it would take 0.3 seconds before the shot actually fired. So we want the player to be able to shoot straight away or walk straight away or run straight away or jump straight away and then have the server confirm that that's happened. Now obviously there's the scenario where the player has moved to a location that he shouldn't have moved and that's where we get reconciliation, and that'll be what we cover in the next video. So as a quick summary, client prediction allows the client to move as it sees fit, while still sending the information to the server to be confirmed, and ensuring that we're still able to use server authoritative logic. Why do we want to do this? Well, because ping will cause an input delay, and if we don't account for this, it would result in a terrible player experience, and the higher ping the user, the much worse the experience will be. We want to mitigate that as much as we possibly can. So that's it for the theory portion of this. Now let's jump over to the practical and see how we can actually implement this. As always, this video wouldn't be possible without the support of my patrons. So I want to give a big shout out to Pat in the Emerald tier, Raphael in the Gold tier, Lanky Moose in the Silver tier, as well as Castle Coders. Thanks everyone. And if you would like to follow me as well, it's patreon.com slash See you guys in the next video.